All right, hello everyone and welcome. Thank you for joining us for today's training. Getting started completing contract award task. This is our 8th webinar in a series of passport vendor trainings. Okay, today we'll begin by talking about MOCS and its purpose. Then we'll give an overview of contract award tasks and share some best practices when it when completing contract award tasks before showing you how it's done with a live in system demonstration. Finally, we'll share resources that help you use passport and get stuff done. So, who is MOX? The mayor's office of contract services, also known as MOX leads procurement for New York City. We serve as an oversight and service agency dedicated to making it easier to do business with the city. To learn more about MOX, the city's fiscal spending on procurement, and the procurement process overall, you can watch the recording of our Finding Opportunities webinar, which is posted on our website, nyc.gov passport. If you've been watching our webinars lately, or visited the Getting Started page over at nyc.gov passport, then this graphic will look familiar to you. This is an ideal path to contracting with the city. After your response to a contracting opportunity or RFX has been selected, completing contracting award tasks is the next step. You might be wondering, how do vendors benefit from completing contract award tasks and passport? Well, passport makes this process streamlined and efficient. The quicker you complete contract award tasks, the less time it will take for your contract to get re registered. The longer you hold off on completing these tasks, the longer it will take for your contract to get registered. And remember, Contract registration opens the doors for starting your work and getting paid. There are three main actions that vendors must complete during the contract registration process. First, vendors submit the required documents and information as requested by their contracting agency. Then, vendors review the contract agreement carefully and approve it. And finally, vendors sign the contract with an e-signature. Before we dig into completing contract award tasks, let's, let's review a, the relevant user roles you will need. Vendor admin, procur vendor procurement level two, and vendor contract signatory are the only roles that can actively complete contract award tasks in Passport. <clears throat> the contact who requested the organization's passport vendor account is automatically given the vendor admin role. They are the only role that can manage contacts and assign user roles in the vendor profile. When it comes to completing contract award tasks in passport, the vendor admin can set up the contracting team, Enter information regarding the contracting site, subcontractors, and LL34 compliance when applicable. Submit vendor documents and review the contract agreement. They are not able to sign the contract. The vendor procurement level two role has the same privileges as the vendor admin for completing contract award tasks. The vendor contract signatory is the only role that can sign the contract. Here are some best practices and reminders for managing contacts and user roles. As soon as possible, have your vendor admin go into the contacts tab of your vendor profile to ensure all contacts with the correct roles have been added. 
Remember to identify whether a contact is an LL34 contact or holds a principal owner or officer role. The definitions for principal owner and officer are listed within Passport for your convenience. Next, it's important to remember that the role of vendor contract signatory is not the same as the role of signatory. A signatory refers to a contact with privileges to sign the vendor enrollment package. A vendor contract signatory, on the other hand, is a contact with privileges to sign the contract agreement. And finally, keep in mind that your organization may be structured such that one contact is assigned several roles. For example, the same contact may be assigned as a vendor admin and as a vendor contract signatory. And now I will turn it over to Karen who will cover how to find a contract and task in Passport. Okay, thanks Brooke. All right, so one of the questions that vendors ask is, how will I know if my organization has a contract ready for action? You can find your contracts by checking your email or by checking Passport. I'll show you those two methods in more detail next. In method one, the vendor admin will receive an email notification from Passport similar to the one shown on screen. Inside that email, you'll find a link to navigate to the contract workflow. In method two, you will log into your Passport account, click contracts from the top navigation menu, and select manage my contracts from the dropdown. From there, you conduct a search that filters your contracts by agency, procurement method, contract status, or other criteria. Once you've located the contract, click the <laughs> Click the pencil icon next to the result to enter the contract screen. Once you've opened the relevant contract, go to the Overview tab by clicking Overview in the left navigation menu. The Overview tab will provide you with a summary of the contract info. You may wish to note the contract EPIN a unique identifier for the contract to quickly find your contract within the Manage My Contracts module. Simply enter the contract EPIN in the keywords field to find your contract the next time you log in, and that'll save you some time. Here are some best practices and reminders for finding your contract. If you don't see the Passport email notification in your inbox, it's a good idea to check your spam or junk folder for an email with the subject line, Passport Notification. Whether or not you can find the email notification, we encourage you to check within Passport to find your contract. Once you've found your contract, it's a good idea to favorite the page by clicking the star icon on the upper left-hand side of the screen. When you log into Passport again, you can click the star icon and go directly to the contract. So after you've found your contract, it's time to find your tasks. And how will you know which tasks you need to complete? There's a tool inside the Overview tab of your contract called the Award Milestones Tracker. The Award Milestones Tracker allows both vendors and their contracting agencies to track a contract's progress toward contract registration with the NYC Comptroller's Office. On the screen is an example of the Award Milestones Tracker. Please note that the milestones displaying for a contract might be different based on the contract type. No matter what contract type you have though, next to each milestone, 
you will see a status icon. A green check mark indicates the milestone was completed. An orange clock indicates that the milestone is ready to be worked on or in progress. A gray circle indicates that the milestone has not been started or is not applicable. If you'd like to learn more about the award milestones tracker, a guide is linked within Passport for your convenience. Typically, there are three milestones that require vendor action. There's vendor documentation submission, vendor contract review, and contract signature. Please note that this milestone is completed by both the vendor and the contracting agency. But if you have not yet completed the vendor enrollment process, you will also need to complete actions related to the vendor filing status milestone. The vendor shown in this example is filed, so there's a green check mark next to this milestone. So now that you've located your contract and you know which milestones you must complete within Passport, it's time to tackle milestone one, vendor documentation submission. For this milestone, you will need to enter information, set up your contracting team, and upload documents. Once you've opened the relevant contract within Passport, you're immediately brought to the header tab of the contract details module. In the alert section of the header tab, you may see a blocking alert indicated by a red circle with a white line. You will not be able to proceed with completing a milestone until all blocking alerts have been addressed. In this example, the vendor must enter at least one site for this contract. We'll show you how to do this next. For some contracts, you will need to indicate the site where the contract work takes place. If the contract work takes place at a location designated by the contracting agency, they may enter this information in Passport for you. Otherwise, it's your job to enter this information in Passport. One question that vendors ask is, what address should I enter as my site? The answer is, that depends. Let's look at some examples to help you understand. Chantelle, a graphic design consultant, will complete her contract work from her home office, usually at her kitchen table, with Fluffy at her side. So, she would enter her home address as the site. On the other hand, we have Fitri. She's an architectural engineer at ABC Company who works remotely. So, she would enter her company's address as the site location. And finally, we have Bob the Builder. Bob's concrete company will complete contract work at a location near Barclays Center. This location was designated by the contracting agency in the contract module, so Bob will not need to enter the site information. So now that you understand which address to input, let's look at how you will enter the site location in Passport. To add site information, Click the Sites tab in the left navigation menu. Click the Add Address button. Then enter the address in the relevant fields. Be sure to hit the Save and Close button when you are done. So here are some best practices and reminders for entering site information. You may include multiple locations if the project is being implemented at multiple sites. If multiple addresses are necessary, provide an identifying name in the address label. And finally, make sure that the addresses you enter are accurate. You may change site information at any time 
before you have completed the vendor documentation submission milestone. After that point, sites may only be updated upon contract registration via a contract change request. The next action you will take in milestone one is to set up your contract team. The contract team consists of individuals in your organization who are dedicated to a contract's activities. To set up your contract team, click on the Setup Team tab in the left navigation menu. The Setup Team section shows the agency contacts with whom you can communicate about this contract. The vendor contact signatory lists the team members authorized in Passport to sign the contract on behalf of your organization. This section is read only and does not require the vendor to take any action. In this example, the vendor contact signatory section is blank. It will be populated after tasks are completed in the documents tab. We'll share more about this later. The vendor team section lists all contacts from your organization who will be working on the contract and their designated user role in connection with the contract. To add or remove contacts on your organization's contracting team, click the add contact button. Enter the name of the team member you would like to add or remove in the keywords field. And then click search. Select the checkbox next to the names of the team members you want to add or remove. Here are some best practices and reminders for setting up your contract team. All members of the vendor contract team should receive notifications from Passport regarding their assigned contracting tasks. Once the contract tasks are initiated by the agency, the contracting team is auto-populated from the contacts tab of your vendor profile. You can manually add and remove members to the team until the vacuum vendor documentation submission milestone is complete. So please review to ensure the information is correct before you hit the submit button. The next, the next task in milestone one is related to subcontractors. If your contract allows the use of subcontractors, you may have entered their information in your RFX response. It is your responsibility to review your subcontractor's information for accuracy. To view the subcontractors associated with your contract, click the subcontractors tab in the left navigation menu. In the subcontractor information section, you will see basic information related to the subcontractor, such as the dollar amount of the subcontract, their participation percentage, and more. Here are some best practices and reminders for the subcontractor tab. Subcontractor information is carried over from the RFX response and pre-populated in the subcontractor tab. Prior to contract registration, vendors will not be able to edit the information in this tab. Only agencies can. If you need to update your subcontractor information prior to our, prior to registration, please email the agency contact for your contract. The next task in Milestone 1 is related to submitting requested documents. Vendors will need to submit documents as requested by their contracting agency. The type of documents to be submitted will vary, but all documents will be submitted via Passport within the Documents tab of the contract. Clicking on Documents in the left navigation menu, 
will bring you to the Documents tab. The Documents tab contains four sections. Authoring documents, vendor documents, contract documents, and sourcing project documents. Each section facilitates critical activities in the contract development process. For this milestone, however, we will focus on the vendor documents section. In the vendor documents section, look for the requested document type. Here you will see which documents are necessary for you to submit for this contract. Common examples include certifications and licenses relevant to the work you will perform for the contract. In the example shown, the contracting agency has requested the vendor to submit an Equal Employment Opportunity EEO, document. To add the requested document, click on the Add Documents button. In the Content Editor Vendor Documents window, find the name of the requested document in the list and then click on it. Enter the document name as requested document by the contracting agency. Use the click or drag to add a file button to upload the relevant file and then press save and close. Here are some best practices and reminders for submitting requested documents. Make sure you select the exact name of the document as requested or seen in the list. If you do not select the correct name or do not write the same name for document type, then the vendor documentation submission milestone will not show as completed. It is good practice to name the file you will upload according to the requested document name and document type. This makes it easier to find in your computer and ensures that you are uploading the correct file. Some documents like licenses and disability insurance will require you to enter the begin date and the expiration date. If you have questions about the requested document, contact your contracting agency contact. The final task in Milestone 1 is related to LL34 compliance. Local Law 34 of 2007, LL 34 is the New York City's campaign finance law that limits municipal campaign contributions from principal owners, officers, and senior managers of entities doing business with the city. An organization is required to submit information related to LL 34 compliance each time it enters into a transaction considered a business dealing with the city regardless of whether the organization or the people associated with it make or intend to make campaign contributions. Clicking LL34 Compliance in the left navigation menu will bring you to the LL34 Compliance tab of your contract. This tab consists of three sections. The Principal Officer section, the Principal Owner section, and the Senior Manager section. If your organization does not have listed owners in the Principal Owners section, you must select a reason. If selecting the reason other, you are required to provide an explanation. You can also add or remove individual owners using the same method as principal officers. To add organization owners, click the Add an Organization button. Type the organization's name next to the organization's name field, and then click the Save and Close button. To remove an organization owner, click the Trash icon next to the organization's name. You are also required to identify a senior manager as part of the LL34 compliance tab. 
To add a senior manager, follow the same procedure as shown for adding principal officers and individual principal owners. To remove a contact as a senior manager, click the gray X next to their name. Here are some best practices and reminders for the LL34 compliance tab. Entering information in the LL34 compliance tab replaces the doing business data form. This information must be completed by a vendor admin. At least one manager, one senior manager must be added. And now, Fatima will discuss the tasks associated with the remaining milestones before doing a live in-system demonstration. Thanks so much, Karen. Milestone two is vendor contract review. Agencies follow a contract authoring workflow that includes an internal drafting process, an option to share the authoring document with the vendor prior to law department approval, if required, and a mandatory final document review where vendors will review and approve the authoring document in Passport. If the agency decides to provide a vendor review prior to law department approval, the vendor will be able to review and make those changes to the authoring document. Vendors will take those steps in the authoring document section of the documents tab. The example shown on your screen has a status of pending vendor approval. To take action on this task, simply click the pencil. To identify your organization's vendor contract signatory, click the ellipses button. In the next window, click the checkbox next to the name of the vendor contract signatory. And when you're done selecting, click the close button. You'll then be returned to the document where your next step is to click the submit button to return the reviewed authoring document to the contracting agency. After submission, the status of the authoring document changes to in progress and the agency will continue with the contract authoring workflow. Now, after the agency has completed the contract document and the law department has provided approval if they required to, the authoring document or that contract is ready for final review. The contracting agency will send the contract to the vendor for review in Passport, and the vendor will receive an email notification from Passport. Email notifications will contain a link to the authoring document in Passport. Upon clicking the link within, you'll be brought to the Documents tab within the contract module. The authoring document section is where the contract agreement will be available for your final review. Note, the status box here says pending final review. To open the authoring document, click the pencil icon. The vendor contract signatory assigned in this task is the person who can use DocuSign to sign off on the contract with the agency contract signatory. To assign a vendor contract signatory, click the ellipses button. Then click on the checkbox next to their name in the vendor signatory contact window, and then click the close button. Clicking on the gray X next to their name will remove the vendor contract signatory. When the authoring document is opened, there will be action buttons at the top of the page. They correspond to actions you can take at this phase of your review. Clicking the forward button allows you to forward the task to another vendor contact. Clicking the reject button rejects the task and sends it back to the agency. Now, if you reject a document, Passport will require you to explain why. Clicking the approve button approves the task and will allow for the signature task to be initiated. Be sure to click the save or save and close button to save your work before moving on. Here are some best practices and reminders for reviewing the contract. You must designate, designate at least one vendor contract signatory to review the authoring document. 
only the vendor contract signatories who are selected during the final review of the authoring document task can sign the contract. Now, they don't all have to do it. One signature is sufficient. If you check the authoring document section before your contracting agency has initiated the contract authoring workflow, that section may be blank. Alrighty, so our final milestone, we've gotten there folks, milestone three is contract signature. The next task is for the vendor to electronically sign the document via DocuSign. When the agency has initiated the e-signature process, the assigned vendor contract signatory will provide their signature within DocuSign. Once the document is signed by both the vendor and the contracting agency, the vendor will receive an email notification from DocuSign. Okay, so you'll get an email notification from DocuSign that will include a copy of the signed agreement. And a green check mark next to the contract signature milestone in the awards milestone tracker will only appear after the agency has signed the contract. So this on your screen is an example of a contract that has already been registered. You can see that by looking at this green check mark for comptroller registration. Alrighty, so now we are moving to our live system demonstration. Please keep in mind that this is a training environment, so my screen is not going to look exactly as yours does. And also, this environment is much slower than you will experience in the actual passport environment. Okay, so don't be alarmed. Um, just give me one second. I have to do some magic behind the scenes and switch up some things. Alrighty, so. I think I'm ready, you all, and let me unpause my screen. Woohoo! Can I get a thumbs up if you see my screen with my passport training environment? Excellent. I see hands for high fives. I like those. Alrighty. So we are at the demo. So I am logged in as a vendor P. Okay. So just so you're aware, I am logged in as a vendor admin. So I have lots of privileges here. So remember, one of the first things people ask is, okay, wait, I submitted an RFX response. How do I even know that I've been selected for an award? Okay, well, I'm going to show you that right now. So RFX, browse my RFX responses. Okay, and then what I want you to do is I want you to filter by status. I'm going to take off released and I want to go to selections made. That means the contracting agency has received RFX responses, they've reviewed them and they have made their selection. Okay, and then I'm going to hit search. Now, again, this is a training and test environment. And so in this scenario, I am a prolific vendor. <laughs> so I have submitted um, all of these RFX responses. But when you found the one that you're interested in, the one that you wanna check, you'll go ahead and you'll click the pencil icon. But because I have so many, I'm gonna do a little shortcut. Okay, so I'm gonna put in my little shortcut in the keywords. As you can see, I'm typing that in. And I'm making sure there are no spaces there and I'm going to hit search, take this off. And if you don't see anything pop up in your search, that's okay. What I want you to notice is that I have an extra space behind those numbers. So I'm going to backspace one, then I'm going to hit search and that will bring it up. Okay, so sometimes we're using the keywords field. If you're copying and pasting, you might see that it doesn't give you any results. It's usually because you have an extra space in there. So I'm clicking the pencil icon. And where do I go from here? There's so many tabs. I'm going to go to manage my responses. And then I'm going to look down here, the RFX name, you know, submission status submitted. And here's where the money resides selected. My selection status has been selected. So that is how you figure out whether you have been selected for an award. So now, you know, you've been selected, do, 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 you're waiting. And then you're going to get the happy email, um, in passport notification email that says, you know, you have been, um, here's your contract. Okay. That Karen showed you earlier. So remember we said, whether you receive that passport um, notification in your email, we do encourage you to check passport. So how do you do that? You're going to go to um, contracts, manage my contracts. Okay. And let's just say that, you know, you received that email and you recalled in that email that you received the contract EPIN. 
Okay, so I'm going to put that here in my keywords, and that'll bring me directly to where I want to go. If you don't have the contract EPIN, I'm going to move my stuff over so you can see. I'll reset. If you don't have the contract EPIN, a great thing to do is to look at contract status. Okay, so what you're interested in is those things that are in progress. I'm going to cancel all of these out. I'm just clicking that X button. All right, and then I'm going to click search. So if you um, have a ton of contracts that are in progress, like me, for example, you may need to know a bit more information. So that's why I've used the contract EPIN and I've searched. Okay, so I found my contract. I am here. I'm going to click the pencil icon to open it. And now here's the next thing that I'm going to do, because I don't want to have to go through that again. I am going to use the star feature, the favoriting feature. OK, so I'm going to click on this icon and actually I cheated. I've already created a favorite page. This is the live demo page. I can edit it to call it something else. OK, but that's the page that we're on now. All right. Um, so that is how you find your contract. And now how do I know which tasks I need to do? So I'm going to go to the overview tab. And I'm going to scroll all the way down and I'm going to see the award milestone section. And if I scroll down, you'll see that there are 21 results. And here's a really neat thing that I can do in Passport. When I see those things with extra pages, I don't like to, to go over to extra pages. So I go to the top header row. I right click. I go to grid page size. I'm going to make it 50, for example, and click OK. And what does that do? That makes it so that all of these tasks and the, all of these milestones in the award milestone tracker are displaying on one page. So quick little tip. If I wanted to reset it, I just go to reset to default parameters and click OK. And it will save those settings throughout the rest of your logins. All righty. So let's see. What do I have to do yet? You know what? I want to see a thumbs up in the chat if you think that I have not yet completed milestone one vendor documentation submission all right so thumbs up means nope you still have to do that vendor documentation submission is in progress all righty excellent i'm seeing those thumbs up that's exactly right and i know this because i have this orange clock here all right the next task that i need to do is going to be the vendor contract review and this one has a gray icon if you remember that means it has not yet been started or it may not be applicable well i know it's applicable but it hasn't been started yet and the final one is contract signature okay and when it comes to vendor filing status i've completed the vendor enrollment process i am filed so i have a green check mark all righty so now that i know what i need to do i'm going to start on milestone one which is vendor documentation submission so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go over to the header and I'm going to look at the alerts. And this is so helpful, folks. It's telling me that I have at least two things to do. I have to enter site information and I need to do something in the LL34 compliance tab. OK, but I'm going to go through each tab. So let's go to the sites. OK, and so let's just say that I am in relation to this contract work. There are multiple sites. OK, so I'm going to click add address and I'm going to enter the first address and let's see if you all can guess what this address is. So address line one is 20 income street. It's in Queens. And my zip code is 11375. Any ideas what this address label is? It's Spider-Man's address. <laughs> okay, save and close. No thanks. Alrighty. So I'm going to add another address. Okay, maybe I have another address. So Spider-Man is on the job. And you know what? Spider-Man is part of the Avengers. So maybe some of that work is also going to be done at the Avengers Mansion. So I'm going to enter that information here. 895th Avenue. It's in New York, New York, and it's uh, 10021. Okay, so I'm going to type in a label, Avengers Mansion, save and close. No thanks. Alrighty, so there you go. The address labels have popped up. The addresses are there. We're good to go. I'm just going to hit save because I'm a saveaholic. All right. All right, so I've entered in the addresses. The next thing I need to do is make sure that my contracting team is set up. So I'm going to go here to set up team in the left navigation menu. And as Karen showed you earlier, the vendor contact signatory section, it's auto populated, but there's nothing here yet. 
and why? If you remember in the award milestone tracker that I had a gray circle next to vendor contract review, right? So until the contract authoring workflow has been started, this will not be populated. So don't worry about it. You have nothing to do. What you must focus on is here, the vendor team section, all right? So let's say I've perused and I want to remove someone. I can remove Jack Bauer. Bye, Jack. But maybe I made a mistake and I want to add him back. So I click add contact. I'm going to look for Jack's name. Okay, Jack is here. So I'm going to click there. Maybe I also want to add Amon. So what I want you to notice is that Amon is going to appear when I click here. It's going to appear over here as well. Look, look at this. Ooh, there he is. There he's not. There he is. See right here? There he's not. All right, you've had enough of that. So I'm going to click close. And I've added Jack back so you can see that he appeared again. I'm going to hit save because I'm a saveaholic. I can't help myself. And by the way, one of the reasons why I am a saveaholic is because I made up that term and Passport will log you out after 20 minutes of inactivity. So I want to make sure that any work that I do is saved along the way. All right, so I have set up my team, right? But let's say there's somebody on my team who, you know, I click add contact. I'm not finding them. They should be there. What's the problem? Well, that means that I have not added them as a contact in the vendor profile. So here's a long way and a quick way to get to them. I'm gonna go to Passport. So that brings you back to the homepage, clicking on this logo. And then I'm gonna click on this quick link, Vendor Contacts. Okay, because I am logged in as the vendor admin, I can do what I'm about to show you next. I'm gonna close out these alerts here. And we're going to scroll down. I'm in the contacts tab of my vendor profile and you're seeing all of the contacts that are listed. So remember I said that, or excuse me, Karen said that you need to make sure that you've added all your contacts, you've given them the correct roles, um, those positions and, and the LL34 contact. So I didn't do that. I didn't take Karen's advice. So now I'm having to double back and do this. So let's do it now. Let's say that Jack is going to be our LL34 contact. I need to add him here. Let's have ABC XYZ as well. And you know what, Aman, I'm gonna make Aman a senior manager, okay? And then I'm gonna hit save and refresh. So why am I doing this? I'm doing this because I wanna make sure that everybody has the correct roles, okay? And everybody is identified the way that they should be as an LL34 contact or as a principal owner, principal officer, or senior manager. And those definitions are given here. Now, if I want to go back to my contract, I'm going to go to my favoriting button. <laughs> Live demo. This is why I love that favoriting icon. I can quickly go back to where I was. And where I was was on the setup team tab. Excellent. All righty. So now the next thing I'm going to look at is subcontractors. And in this example, there's no information in this in this box, right? And that's because there are no subcontractors identified for the contract work. That's okay. That means I have one less thing to do. And we like that. The next tab that we're going to go into is documents. Alrighty, so as you can see, the authoring documents tab has no information, zero results. Okay, and what does this mean? It means that the contracting agency has not initiated the contract authoring workflow. Okay, no problem. When it's been initiated, we'll see something appear here. But where do we focus our energy? Just like Karen told us in milestone one, we're focusing on the vendor documents section. Okay, so let's use our imagination and pretend that the agency has requested a document. Currently in this example, they have not. So really I have nothing to do, but let's pretend that they asked me for um, a document. All right. And so what I would do is I would read the name of the document and then I would click add documents. And let's say the document that they requested is an authorization letter. So I'm gonna scroll here. Fortunately, I picked one with an A and it's all the way at the top. The authorization letter, I'm going to click on that from the list. And now I have to enter the document name. What I like to do is make sure I'm entering exactly authorization letter. So let me make sure I take my time because I am a typo person. All right, authorization letter. What's my next step? I need to upload the document. So I'm gonna click on this button, click or drag to add a file. I'm choosing to click 
And if you can see in my files, my files have been named with the same name as the document. Okay, so authorization letter. I know that's the correct one because it's named as such. I'm going to click open. It is now uploaded here and I'm going to then click save and close. So as this is doing its magic, you will now see that that document has been uploaded here. If you make a mistake or you need to um, do this again, go ahead and delete the authorization letter by clicking on the trash can. But let's say you wanted to add another document. Perhaps they requested, I'm going to do these messages. Perhaps they requested, I don't know, um, some type of general liability insurance. Remember Karen told you in her best practices for submitting requested documents that certain document types are going to require you to enter a begin date and an expiration date. And again, if you have questions about this, who do you contact? Your contracting agency contact, okay? I'm not gonna upload this, I'm gonna hit close. I just wanted to show that to you. And now the final task here in this milestone one is the LL34 compliance tab. So remember, you're required to do this. So let's start with the principal officers section. So if you, for some reason, do not have a CEO, CFO, or COO in your organization, you need to exclude them, okay? And in order to exclude them, you will click on the appropriate box for the officer position that you are excluding, okay? There you go. You can click on all of them if you wanted. But let's say, I'm going to unclick these because I have them. I need to add, so I'm gonna click on the ellipses here. And I'm going to add my CFO, COO, all the COs and blah, blah, blahs, okay? I'm gonna add all of these beautiful people and then I'm going to click close. Alrighty, so I've added these people. If there's anybody who shouldn't be there, I'm gonna go ahead and X them out. I'm gonna remove you X, Y, Z, A, Y, Z, bye-bye. Alrighty, the next section that I'm going to do is the principal owners section. So if for some reason you are a nonprofit, for example, maybe you don't have any principal owners. And again, Passport is taking its sweet time in this testing environment. Hopefully it will resolve, but I'm going to mock up what you should be doing. I'm logging back in, I'm getting back into the system. I'm going to go back to where I was in my contract detail. Alrighty, here we go again. Let's see if we can do the LL34 compliance. And what do you notice? All the work that I just did, because I didn't hit save after I finished, it's gone. So let's do it again, okay? I'm gonna add Martin and Jack, and I'm gonna hit close. Then I'm gonna hit save. Excellent. So now if it freezes again, it's already there. Principal owners, if I were a nonprofit, I'd click on this box. If I had another reason for why I have no principal owners listed, I would click the other box and then type in my explanation. If I need to add individual owners, again, same process. Click the ellipses, add your individual owners, hit close. Really simple. Hit the save button, just in case. I don't know, maybe you lose internet connection. That might've just happened, okay? And then finally, in the um, principal owner section, you can add an organization. So click the add organization button, type their name, save and close. I've already added them. Let's say I wanna remove Meta by Facebook, by Instagram, by WhatsApp. And then I'm gonna click that trash can icon and then I'll press um, okay. Do I really want to delete this row? Sure do, goodbye. All right, and the final thing I'm going to complete in the LL34 compliance tab is senior managers. I need, I need to identify at least one senior manager. So I'm going to click the ellipses button. And, you know, I'm going to do this person as a senior manager. Click close. Again, if you're not seeing the people there that you should, make sure that you've identified them with these roles, these positions in the contacts tab of your vendor profile. I'm now going to click save. Alrighty, so at this point, I have done everything that I need to do and I'm going to click, actually I'm not. I'm gonna click submit. Mm, fingers crossed it works. So you click submit and then hopefully in your 
award milestone tracker. Oh, look at that folks. The vendor documentation submission uh, milestone has been completed. Now, again, this is a testing environment, so I'm going to have some difficulty showing you the vendor contract review. Um, Karen did a lovely job of showing you that process, but I'm going to see if I can show you some. So I'm going to use my favorited um, pages just to just to show you. OK, so let's see if I can get here. What might it look like? Actually, not that one. Sorry about that, folks. Here we go. Contract review. All right. So remember that Karen said, I'm going to a con another contract and in the documents tab, you see this in progress. This is a case where the contracting agency has initiated the contract authoring workflow and they allowed me to review the contract document before they sent it off um, to the law department. So I reviewed it um, and I assigned the vendor contract signatory. I submitted it and now we're here. Okay, and so what I want you to see is I go to overview and the award milestone tracker. This is in progress. Okay, so we're just waiting now for the agency to work their magic on the, the workflow. All right, there's nothing more for me to do, but let me show you what it looks like when we have things done. So pending final review, remember that? That's the status that we're looking for. So I'm going to another contract and in this contract where I am in the process and I'll show you that overview awards milestone tracker. I've already um, I haven't done the vendor documentation submission, but I have done the vendor contract review that first part. They sent it to me and I reviewed it. I sent it back. It moved along the contract authoring workflow. And now what's happening is that I need to do a final review of the authoring document. And where do I go? The documents tab. OK, and so in this case, now you see the status as pending final review. I'm going to click on the pencil icon. And I'm going to now designate a contract signatory. So I'm going to click on the ellipses. I'm going to pick Farmer Gwen. That's my homie. Then I'm going to click close. Farmer Gwen appears. All right. One other thing I want to show you. Um, Typically, because this is a test kind of environment, you're not going to see any details here, but typically you'd see like your document loaded in the right side of the pane. Um, and I kind of, I kind of don't like to look at things that way. I prefer to have it in a separate window. So what you can do is you can go over here to where it says export and you could see a word version of those same documents that appear here or a PDF version. So you can extract it to a Word or PDF and it'll prompt you to then maybe save it. So it's popping up here and it wants me to save it. Okay, save it and open it. Alrighty, once you are done, I'm not going to do it, but once you are done and everything looks good, you're going to hit approve. If I hit approve in this test environment, nothing will happen, but just pretend that I hit it and it's all good to go. All right, folks, so that is pretty much it for what I can show you in Passport. If you remember the vendor um, contract review, that's the milestone we're on. Once that's done, the next and final milestone is going to be contract signature. And that is not done in Passport. That's done via DocuSign. Okay, so unfortunately, I do not have anything in DocuSign to show you. However, there is a wonderful video on our learning to use passport page that you can visit over at nyc.gov slash passport. Brooke is going to show you that a little bit later. That shows you exactly how to add your e-signature to the contract within DocuSign. Alrighty, so I'm going to pause my screen really quickly and we are going to get back to it. So I think that is all I have to show you now in the uh, live demo, the in-system demonstration. So now Brooke is going to share the resources that we have to help you get stuff done, as our lovely mayor says, in Passport. Brooke, take it away. Hi, uh, thank you, Fatima. Okay. The two major websites you can use to get information about MOCS and Passport are the MOCS help page, nyc.gov slash MOCS help, 
and the passport page, nyc.gov passport. These two pages will allow you to access everything you need regarding passport, especially the resources that we'll be reviewing today. The MOX Help page, nyc.gov slash MOX Help, is meant to assist users with MOX applications. This help page lists all the logins to the applications we support, Passport and HHS Accelerator, as well as FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions, and Learning Materials. At the bottom of the MOX Help page, you will also find the link to reach out to our MOX Service Desk. To get to our Passport website directly, you only need to type in the address nyc.gov slash passport. A few highlights. On the Learning to Use Passport page, you can, the, our Learning to Use Passport page can be accessed from the left-hand navigation. There you'll find user manuals, quick guides, and videos to help walk you through how to use Passport. These are organized by topic and module. I would also like to promote our FAQ page, which covers all the commonly asked questions that our mock service desk receives. You can also access this from the left-hand navigation menu. Now let's take a look on how you can navigate these pages next. The Learning to Use Passport page is organized by topic and module. There you can find the registration links for our in-person workshops, sign up for our next vendor webinar, and find guides to help you get stuff done in Passport. The FAQ page covers a wide range of useful topics, including technical support, account creation and management, and other essential information. Again, if you want to know how to do these things in Passport or have a question about Passport, please check these pages first. <clears throat> the relevant resources related to today's topic, completing contract award tasks, can be found in the contract development and registration section of our Learning to Use Passport page. This is where you'll find e-courses and guides, as well as e-signature via DocuSign, the, via DocuSign video Fatima mentioned earlier. Thank you again so very much. Good luck to you. And remember to fill out that survey so that we can make our events and webinars more relevant to you. The link's in the chat. It'll be emailed to you. Take care and bye-bye.